Hello. This is Father Fish. I have been introducing the concept of biodiversity for a few months now. Recently, I posted a video that was part of a conversation Alex and I had the hidden secret in your aquarium about biodiversity. To my knowledge, there is no serious effort anywhere in the industry to pay attention to this really very fundamental issue. There is perhaps nothing more important, more significant in your aquarium than biodiversity. Saltwater enthusiasts, particularly reef keepers, have known for 20 years or more about the importance of having a wide variety of bacteria and other microscopic life in their substrate in order to be able to maintain the health of their coral reef systems. This has been of inestimable value in the saltwater community as a way of being able to maintain environments that are stable, sturdy, healthy, and vibrant for tropical saltwater, tropical fish, and invertebrates. For whatever reason, this conversation has not gone on in the freshwater community, nor has there been any serious effort to pay attention to the real biological needs of a freshwater aquarium. So we're going to be digging into that. And to do that, I want to set a few guidelines. Number one, because there really is nothing on the market, save a few, oh, a few types of bacteria that are available, the most common types that are found in tanks even before they're purchased in bottles and put in, there really is nothing in the marketplace that does a substantial job of balancing your aquarium. So what you're going to have to do is a little DIY. You're going to have to get out and find sources of biological diversity. So, let's start with a few myths. The biggest myth is that anything coming out of the wild that you put in your tank is dangerous. Well, if that were true, there would be no saltwater reef systems because everything that comes into saltwater systems is out of the wild. Even that which is cultured in laboratories, the roots of those animals are in the wild. And there is no attempt to clean them up, rather quite the reverse. The attempt is to try to save to rescue, if you will, the natural critters 
living in the natural environment which which provide the foundation for a healthy and balanced system in freshwater it is exactly the same thing in freshwater in order to maintain a genuinely healthy balanced aquarium you simply must bring a variety of biological material into your aquarium. Now, how can you do this? Clearly, you can do it from your local fish store. You can do it by sharing with other hobbyists. But more importantly, you can do it by going outside and collecting living organisms from your natural environment. Now, I have recently come to learn that there are some states which prohibit removing water from a wild system. Let me suggest to you that if this is a concern for you, call up your local state government. Talk to the Fish and Wildlife Division. Tell them what you're doing and tell them what you need. You will, in all likelihood, not only get their approval, but they will sanctify what you're doing. They will find it of value to them, and they will find that you will find that what you are doing is of value to true biologists, to people genuinely interested in the life cycle of the systems that we live around. So, don't be intimidated by that, number one, by any law or any rule or regulation. I'm not suggesting you break them or violate them. I'm suggesting you contact the authorities in question and discuss the matter with them and get their approval to do precisely what you want to do. You may need a permit. Permits are available to be able to do that. Apply for it. Get a permit. That will give you the flexibility and the comfort level of knowing that what you are doing, you are doing not only legally, but appropriately. Now, as to the issue of Oh my God, I'm going to bring deadly diseases into my tank. Well, dear heart, if the wide world were filled with deadly diseases, nothing much would be alive and healthy. Quite the reverse is typically the case. It does... It will serve you well to pay attention to where you are collecting material. Spend a little time looking in that pond or ditch or stream or creek or lake or whatever it is and make sure it is healthy. Make sure there are not um, uh, dead fish laying around. Make sure there's no nasty, uh, disgusting odor of of uh, refuse or garbage or, or or dead material. Make sure it's healthy. You can tell by looking, you really can. If it smells healthy, if it looks healthy, then you may take the risk. And it's really, frankly, no risk at all. Once you understand what it is you're really trying to do. 
you're collecting the living material from a living body of water and putting it in your aquarium. Now, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do this? Maybe you don't want to do this, but I'm going to convince you, you do want to do this and you need to do this because the fish that you have in your system need it. They need a strong, healthy, balanced environment. The environment in your tank, the living material in your tank is not simply the fish invertebrates and plants. It is millions and millions of microscopic creatures, bacteria, uh, microbes, tiny little animals that can only be seen with a microscope. There is an absolute world of life going on in your tank that you cannot see and are generally going to be completely unaware of. Nevertheless, that biological world is the foundation of your aquarium. If it is healthy, then your aquarium will be healthy. How is it healthy? By being diverse. If there are very few types of bacteria in your tank, then it becomes very simple for one to take over and run rampant and drive the oxygen out of the water and kill everything. That's typically what happens when a tank crashes. It is not adequately diverse. And so one uh, bacteria or one organism, microscopic organism, will dominate, will take over, will control, will destroy everything else and will kill your tank. Don't let that happen. Increase the diversity, increase the variety of life, and that variety will balance itself out. Will achieve a stability by virtue of its diversity that cannot occur in any other way. You can't do it by trying to keep a tank sterile. You cannot keep a tank sterile. That, that is a mission impossible. That is an outrageous absurdity. The minute you put any kind of living material, or for that matter, dead organic material like fish food, into your tank, you are nurturing, feeding, and causing to explode the biological life in that tank. Specifically bacteria, fungi, and other microscopic life forms. If you have life forms in there from a variety of sources, then that structure that's built up creates a stability and a balance and a harmony that allows your tank to be very strong and very stable and to deal with the occasional catastrophe, like a two-year-old dumping all the food in the tank. That need not necessitate breaking the tank down. Oh, you want to get the excess food out, to be sure, as much as possible. But if you have a strong microbial foundation in your aquarium, it will be able to deal with that excess food. It will eat it, if you will. It'll break it down. And it'll bring it down into the depths of the substrate, pulling it out of the water column and into the substrate where the roots of your plants will be able to take it up as nutrition. So, a balanced aquarium 
is balanced by virtue of being a biologically diverse aquarium. We're going to look in future videos at some ways you can specifically increase biodiversity. I've given you one important hint, and that is to get out and do some collecting. But also, don't be afraid to bring water in, dirt, plants, other forms of, of, of life from the aquariums of friends because their tanks are going to create, are going to, to be maintaining biological life somewhat different from your own that will help improve biodiversity. The only reason to be afraid of something taking over and killing your tank is if your tank is so impoverished of life that it simply cannot sustain any kind of impact at all. In other words, the less biological activity you have going on in your tank, the more likely you're going to have a problem. Dead fish are not a function of bringing something in from the outside. 99% of the time, when a fish dies in a tank, it is because of something that was done to that tank, to that fish, or in that system that caused it to happen. It wasn't because something was brought in from the outside. That is virtually never the case. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to bring in life from outside your aquarium. That is, after all, what your aquarium is. It is foreign life being brought into it. It is you bringing things in, bringing fish, plants, invertebrates, water, sand, dirt, mud, driftwood, rocks, stones, life. Bringing life in. Wherever you may find it, if it looks healthy and you're interested in it, if it seems nice, bring it in. If you want to try it in a little container on the side for a while, by all means do so. I'm way past that myself, but that's me. <laughs> Put it in a jar. Let it stew in a jar for a while. In fact, do one of our, let's see if I can find them. One of our um, uh, resurrection jars. Do a resurrection jar. Got a video about resurrection jars. Go out and uh, uh, get a handful of mud and put it in a jar and fill it with water and bring it home and put it on the wind itself. I've got mine floating in a tank. <laughs> and it's got, it's been in there about four days, and I'm seeing a lot of little animals in it. Things that I will probably, at some point, pour into the tank. Because the tank will benefit from it. Okay. I've beat that horse to the point where it's down on all fours. So, think about this. Take the risk. Try it. Do it with a little tank over on the side that has nothing to do with anything else you're doing. It'll become your favorite tank. Guaranteed. Biodiversity. Biodiversity. You're going to be hearing a lot from me about that coming up soon. Take care for now. Love you all. Father Fish here. Bye-bye.